Go live right now, ladies and gentlemen. We are live. Welcome, everybody, to the No Sleep Podcast's ninth anniversary celebration. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to the No Sleep Podcast. Is it our birthday or our anniversary? That's the big question. I am David Cummings. I'm the host of the show. I'm the guy who started all this nonsense. So all I have to say is happy ninth anniversary to us all. Hooray, hooray. <laughs> we have got a massive live uh, stream for you today. We have so many people and uh, oh, look, there's even more coming in. And uh, so why don't we just... Uh, Let's say we just welcome everyone onto the screen. Come on in, everybody. Come on in. Here we go. Look at this massive explosion <laughs> of people. Well, you know, massive oh, no, what happened explosion to Graham? of people. That well, not look good. That is not <laughs> healthy. There he is. Memory files a lot of people here. Not healthy. Peter, hello, you're looking hello. great. Hello, hello. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> oh, wow. That's, That's a lot usual. of people. Oh, it's Jan. Hello, Jan. And we've got some, some new folks joining us. Here. Hi. Nicole uh, made it too. Nicole awesome. slides in under the wire. Yeah. Nicole Dula. And, and oh, Jen. Jen's dropping oh. by. And there's Jen Tracy. <laughs> oh, everybody's just popping in. 
popping in. Yes, and got Andy and Penny. And oh, Andy's oh. here. Uh, wow, this my is... old roommate. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is uh, this is amazing. I feel like a proud papa with all the kids. Here. <laughs> oh, so um, I'll tell you what, with uh, with the fans watching and seeing all these faces, some familiar, some not so familiar, why don't we just uh, quickly go around and uh, this is just like those icebreaker games you play in uh, in college or whatever. So um, basically, we'll call on everybody, just say your name, where you're from, what you do on the show, and then take a shot. How about we do that? Okay, so... Um, <laughs> We'll start, I'll just go by the, the order of my screen. We're going to start with Abby Howard. Abby, one of our illustrators. Hello, Abby. Hello, I'm Abby Howard. I live in Boston. I am an illustrator on the show. I uh, really like to do art, and that's all there is to it, I suppose. Marvelous. And Abby is the artist responsible for this wonderful artwork you see behind us and you've seen on social media, the uh, the ninth anniversary um image and uh if you see it, it's got all these creepy hands and uh I, I love the that design because of course we're a creepy show and we have hands always reaching out and frozen fingers and stuff like that but i also like the symbolic nature of all of the hands that uh, come together to make this show possible so uh, you're that was seeing the idea with that design i was really yeah. happy it came across yeah yeah exactly yeah, so yeah beautiful. we we all have hands we're not just voices we are we are handy folks as well. So <laughs> thank you, Abby. And uh, Mr. Graham Rowett. Hello. Hi, I'm Graham. I'm a voice actor. Mm. And here I'm switching over to a virtual background that I always want to use, which is an Abby Howard uh, Ooh, from Halloween. her Halloween, mm. amazing Halloween poster. Unfortunately, there's, it doesn't always work, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. And we have uh, all the way from, I believe, Texas. Yes, Texas. We have Jimmy Ferrer, who is not only uh, mods. Or, uh, I'll let Jimmy describe himself, but he's a writer as well. He's done stories on the show. Welcome, Jimmy. Hey, guys. My name is Jimmy Ferrer. I'm from Mesquite, Texas. I'm the community manager for the Facebook group, and I have had a few feature uh, sh stories featured on the show. Hopefully to awesome. have more soon. Hey, there we go. Wonderful. <laughs> And from jolly old England, I won't say where, because every every time on tour, I got his location wrong. Mr. James Cleveland. <laughs> Hi, I'm James Cleveland. It's Norwich. Um, <laughs> I, I believe you said I was from Essex last time, which was um, interesting. But yeah, I'm do voice acting. Uh, that's pretty much it, because I'm terrible at art and stuff like that. So, yeah. <laughs> yes, I, I learned on the the Euro tour that Essex is not a place in England you want to be. From. <laughs> we went we went to essex <laughs> yes, we did we did and if you're from essex I, I i'm just telling you what i've heard from other people i love essex gosh do i love it <laughs> <laughs> and uh she's identifying today as david all but we know her yes. as nicole goodnight hi i'm nicole goodnight i'm from rochester new york and i am a voice on the wonderful no sleep podcast yeah. i don't have anything to take a shot with but i got some water Nice, nice. And uh, your your namesake, uh, claiming to be Nicole Goodnight, but from Ripon, England, Mr. David Alt. Hello there, everyone. Uh, coming to you with my magical tea window, which currently has um, a hobgoblin glass full of water. Water? How boring. Yeah, I know. Stay hydrated, everyone. <laughs> Wonderful. Ah, we have a young lady who uh, you may have heard on the show once or twice. We know her as Jennifer, but she goes by <laughs> Jessica McAvoy. That's not what we know everyone as. Hi, I'm Jessica. I'm an editor and voice actor for the No Sleep Podcast. I'm currently in South Dakota for a while. Uh, but yeah, awesome to see so many little cubes of humans. <laughs> Sounds like a great recipe. Yeah. <laughs> Delicious human cubes. <laughs> uh, before we go on, I see lots of people in the uh, the chat, and uh, if you folks want to submit questions or comments, feel free. We've got eyeballs scanning them that will uh, convey messages to us. So please uh, share with us, join join in with us, chatters and YouTube watchers at the moment. Now, where did we leave off? We have a person who's probably the farthest from, um, I guess, from 
my house. Which, I, I, I don't know what that <laughs> means, but uh, we are thrilled to have uh, Mr. Ellie Hirschman joining us. Ellie Hirschman, voice actor for the No Sleep Podcast, um, sitting here in Israel. I'm seven hours ahead of Eastern time, which I think is most of you guys here. Um, so after we finish this up, I will probably go to sleep. Exciting life I lead. <laughs> Wonderful. That's just amazing. I, I sound like an old man. Like, oh, this internet and everyone from around the world gets together. It's, it's yeah, my mom FaceTimes me without blinking an eye, so I'm not sure. You got to get up with the times, boss. I tell you, I do. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> Oh, I forgot, and uh, let me get some music underneath there from Brandon. Ah, and uh, joining us from Los Angeles, we have the wonderful Aaron Lillis. Hello, everyone. I am, as you mentioned, from Los Angeles, born and raised, second generation native, which is a very strange thing to say to most people around here. <laughs> uh, and I'm a voice actor for the show. Wonderful, wonderful. Yes, that's, uh, that's right. I've heard that uh, it's hard to meet someone from L.A. because most people just go to L.A. Yes, exactly. <laughs> All the assholes you see from L.A. are actually imports. <laughs> right, right. Of course. Of course. Right. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, and we have with us Mary Murphy. Hello, Mary. Hey. Um, I'm, I'm Mary. I'm a voice actor, and I live in Brooklyn, New York. I'm currently staying down in West Virginia, so in honor of that, I'm going to have a sip of sweet tea. Ah, sweet tea. That's lovely. <laughs> Wonderful. Great to have you, Mary. There's a gentleman who lives in the Dallas, Texas area. I don't know why I keep introducing people with their cities when they are supposed to tell us themselves. So I will welcome the one and the only Mr. Atticus Jackson. Hello, I'm Atticus Jackson from Dallas, Texas. <laughs> I'm a voice actor, and sometimes I sell you stuff for Mint Mobile. <laughs> <laughs> indeed, indeed. I'd buy that for a dollar. Yeah, it's funny. We um, we get Atticus, a lot, a lot of us, to do different ads. But uh, the favorite one was uh, how, Atticus, you were mentioning, because you've worked in the restaurant industry, you were saying how some of these, uh, uh, whatever you call them, door-to-door -door delivery kind of services are, are, are the bane of restaurant uh, stuff. And so we make you do DoorDash ads. Just to just to rub it in for some reason. The only time I've ever been paid for doing a DoorDash order has been on this one. <gasps> oh. Uh, what, what can you say about DoorDash? Uh, promo code. What is it? Promo code no sleep and all that kind of stuff. You gotta get the ads in. Now there is a gentleman on coming up next on my screen. Um, I, I forget how to pronounce his name. I think he's from uh, Colorado. I believe it's. P P Pieter Lewis. Pieter Lewis. That's exactly correct. A few more O's on the last name, but yes. <laughs> Cubed human Peter Lewis here. <laughs> I am from nowhere specific. It's not important. <laughs> and you are obviously in the d the depth of the night there, apparently. It's uh, either that or Something the, the like that. It's the always night in Colorado. <laughs> Peter hasn't paid his uh, electricity bill. <laughs> <laughs> well welcome peter uh who's next we have from i can't say where he's from he's from a, a purple room and he's playing the music no sorry he has provided the music he's not playing it live right now but uh yes and uh, i'm getting word that it, the music's a little loud so i'm trying to adjust it here brandon's always trying to get I'm his always. music <laughs> but we welcome mr brandon boone the maestro himself Hey everyone, Brandon Boone from Cincinnati, Ohio, and I do the music. Whoosh. Sweet. Swoosh. <laughs> swoosh. Yeah, I haven't seen the swoosh in a long time. It is it is being held back uh, firmly right now. Bun, man, Cincinnati bun. bun does not have the same... Get that not higher up. <laughs> <laughs> Don't judge my not height. <laughs> not shame. Not shaming, yes, that's right. Who do we have next? We have an illustrator who may be one of the uh, most recent additions to the team, but we are thrilled to have her, Emily Cannon. Hello, Emily. Hi. Um, yeah, I'm Emily Cannon. I'm an illustrator, and um, I'm also currently in Colorado, and clearly artificial light. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yes, clearly. It's uh, pitch black in Colorado right mm -hmm. now, but glad no, you've got the, the lights on for sure. Mm -hmm. 
Marvelous. Now we have one of our editorial team, not just Jessica, but we have Ashley McKinley from, I'm going to say way down near Atlanta. Am I right? Um, I'm actually over in Arkansas. Oh, I drove awesome. to Atlanta for that live show. Yeah. Marvelous. And what do you do for us, Ashley? Uh, like you said, I'm the editor. I help pick the stories that are produced on the show. Marvelous. And you're a writer in your own right, no pun intended. So you've done uh, <laughs> you've done a few stories on the show, and you've got some coming mm -hmm. up, right? Yeah. That's wonderful. And um, if you don't mind, it's McAnally. Oh, McAnally. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you. See, I, I just you got to learn how to say this. If I don't, if I don't say your name on the show, it's uh, oh. So have I been pronouncing it incorrectly when I introduce it? Just just one time. And David Alt actually said it correctly when he had my uh, gift exchange story for the Christmas special. So I was kudos because no one ever says it right. They can either spell it correctly and say it wrong, or say it right and spell it incorrectly. So marvelous. Leave it cool. to a Brit to know how to pronounce an American name. <laughs> <laughs> Well done. Next up, we have a couple, a couple of wonderful people who uh, we got to know on the Euro Tour, and we love them to death. Two fabulous people, Penny, Scott Andrews, and Andy Cresswell. Hello. Hi. Yeah, we're um, uh, voice actors from Essex. Essex. Yeah, we're the South Coast Brighton nearish. And uh, we don't have a shot of anything exciting. We're sharing a glass of water because I said to Andy it would be unprofessional to have alcohol. So crazy we are, though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, yes. And we, we didn't we didn't touch a drop of alcohol on the tour, which no. was nice. So mm -hmm. no, no, not a drop. <laughs> <laughs> not a drop. Marvellous. Well, that's great. So, yeah, near near Brighton, which is, uh, you know, where people like Gemma Moore live, right? Oh, no, that's Bristol. Uh, <laughs> keep mixing up. <laughs> well, speaking of uh, cities with the B letter starting it, how about the man, the honorary Toronto Blue Jay, Mr. Dan Zapula? Lo I love the intro. The last name just really flows now after four years. It's uh, <laughs> uh, So anyway, hi, I'm Dan. Uh, I'm from the uh, wonderful city of Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, today I am in, uh, I guess, an honorary Torontonian. So I'm, I'm sporting the hat for the occasion. And wow. I am proud to be wearing a bow tie today. Amazing. Yeah, you look great. Thank you. You got, you got all dressed up, which is the main thing. Yes. Dan is yeah. living his dream as a sports and out, like analyst of some sort. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, who do we have next? We have one, another one of our illustrators, a gentleman all the way over on the, the left coast, as we like to say, Mr. Mark Pelham. Hello, Mark. Hi. Um, my name is Mark Pelham. Uh, I live in the Bay Area in California, and I'm an illustrator for the No Sleep Podcast. Happy to Amazing. be here. Amazing. <laughs> yes. And uh, yesterday was Mark's birthday, everybody. Yep. So that. Yay. Yay. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. <laughs> so this, uh, this, this whole thing is just an excuse to celebrate Mark's birthday. It's nothing That's to do right. with the podcast. <laughs> Thank you all. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. It's always, you know, Mark and Jimmy uh, always come out and help uh, when we do live shows in the Bay Area. And it's great to have folks like that who want to help. They haul gear around, they sell merch for us. So uh, it's awesome to to have you folks meet these people who do so much behind the scenes for us. So it's marvelous. Now we have a gentleman speaking of bow ties and speaking of mustaches. My goodness, which you welcome <laughs> the one and the only Kyle Aker. Did I did I miss somebody speaking about mustaches? I don't think I heard that part. Yes, uh, it was it was on everyone's mind. Kyle. That, that's there's the truth. <laughs> kind of speaks for itself. It does. It's got its own language. Uh, hi, I'm Kyle. I'm a voice actor on the podcast. I'm in Kansas City, uh, on the Kansas side currently, but I love both sides. Uh, until you get over to St. Louis, then then we don't go there. Uh, and I'm doing a shot of oolong tea for everyone. Ooh. Oolong tea. Oh, so it's not long tea that you just go, ooh, long tea. No, it, ooh, la, no that ooh, was la, it. La. Ooh, <laughs> long tea. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is your first dad joke of the stream. Thank you very much. Oh, well, we hit Thank it. You. We got there. <laughs> Well, speaking of dads, we have a fellow Canadian on the stream with us, Mr. Jeff Clement. Hey, everybody. Um, hi, I'm uh, Jeff Clement. I'm a 
producer, voice actor, composer for the show. Um, and I'm happy to be here. Marvelous. And not on camera, but uh, a, a lady very special to Jeff, just happens to be his wife. Violet is, uh, is a big part of what we do. She is, uh, I guess you call her my executive assistant. How does that sound for professional titles? Uh, but she does a lot of the, the, uh, the admin stuff, emails and, and just helping with the episodes getting out. So we say hello to Violet and thank you for all your work. So we're, we're well represented in the Clement household there. <laughs> Indeed. And she says and, hi and wishes her, wishes everybody a happy ninth anniversary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she is wonderful. Speaking of wonderful women, I see down there again from, oh no, shoot, not, I was going to say from the Boston area. Now I messed it up. We're just going to know her as the great watercolor artist known as Jen Tracy. Hello, Jen. Hello. I'm Jen Tracy. I paint some covers and I forgot to get myself a drink. Not even water. <laughs> just probably going to go get one soon. So sorry about wonderful. that. <laughs> now you've come to our Philly shows. Are you based in and around Philly? I'm I'm in South Jersey, so Philly's the closest city to me. So I'm in New South Jersey. Jersey. I know someone in sort of central Jersey. How far are you from Princeton? Oh, I like Princeton, but that's like an hour drive. Ah, right, right. South Jersey, right. You're you're not down the shore there. No, I used to be though. I'm I'm near Philly now. <laughs> Marvelous. Marvelous. I, I know a little bit of Jersey, I don't know why. Nobody's now, down the shore? Down the shore is an odd thing to say. Well, I think that's a very Jersey thing to okay. say down, down the shore. You could go down to the shore or just going to the shore. But yeah, apparently, Graham, you can back me up on this. <laughs> you know, we moved out to Jersey. We're sort of uh, central Jersey and came out here a few years ago. I'm still learning the term terminology. All I know is pork roll. That's, that's my main <laughs> Jersey thing. And if you don't know what that is, look it up. You won't be sorry. I don't think I want to see the search results for that. <laughs> yeah, don't look that up. Yeah, qualify with food or something. To look that up. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, we have, I mentioned uh, Ellie being a long way away. We have another gentleman who is all the way over in Germany, I believe. Uh, that's where we met for the first time. Great illustrator, voice actor, Mr. Jörn Meyer. Hello, Jörn. Hey, hey, everyone. Germany is exactly correct. I live in a nice little city called Bonn. It's on the river Rhine. Um, I'm an illustrator on the show. Uh, David Strider did some voice work all the way back in season two, if memory serves. And I yeah. also have a um, one story so far on the podcast. But yeah, um, illustration is my, is my main gig. Yeah, yeah, Jörn is great. And yeah, that's right. So you've done voice acting, illustrating, mm -hmm. and writing. Mm. most of it briefly but illustration <laughs> as I, I just looked it up uh, the first illustration is from 2015 which is crazy yeah that's amazing can you do music because we're looking for a new musician <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> I, I play guitar really really poorly if, if that's something hey, you'd be interested Sounds about that's all right. we need <laughs> perfect uh, wonderful wonderful um, now, uh, some people have moved around I think I've got everybody except one lady um, oh my goodness I see someone else coming in here. Let me admit her. But uh, I want to introduce from uh, the Boston area. The uh, she's been with us for so many years. We're thrilled to have her here with us, Ms. Nicole Doolin. Hello, Nicole. Hello. <laughs> I'm a voice actor on the show. <laughs> Indeed. And you are from Boston. Yeah, correct? from just outside of Boston. All uh, right. Yes. Yeah, see, I'm, I'm, I'm so used to people talk about Toronto and it's just you can live anywhere around Toronto and you say you're from Toronto, but some people are like, are you from Boston? No, I'm from Cambridge. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> there is a difference, huge difference. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or you don't say you're from Chicago when you're in Evanston. I've learned that mm. as well. So, boy, the anger. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Nicole. Wonderful to have you with us. Now, we have uh, joining us, uh, hopefully she'll come on the screen soon, um, but w while she connects, we are going to, oh, she's coming in. It's Erica Sanderson, everybody. Welcome, Erica. Hello. Erica, we're saying uh, who we are, what we do on the show, and where you're from. Uh, my name is Erica. I'm a voice actor and I do a lot of voices on the No Sleep podcast. Happy birthday. Woo! Yay! Marvelous. Oh, and she, of course, has got the, uh, the, <laughs> the requisite. Uh, 
<laughs> oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> is nobody else drinking? I thought this was a party. Uh, oh no, we're drinking. Uh, You're yeah. just the first one to bring spirits on. <laughs> hey, <laughs> that's right. Two o'clock, but all right, might as well. <laughs> Vodka and sake mixer. <laughs> Indeed. And we have someone joining us who is not on camera, but I think she's connected with audio, and she is over in England. And this woman has been uh, such a, a huge part of the show for many years now. She heads up our editorial team. She is an amazing writer. And uh, honestly, uh, the show wouldn't be what it is today without her because uh, she has been my right left hand and my left foot i think as well she's amazing and she is olivia white are you are you there olivia yeah oh, yes i am here and i'm a bit emotional now <laughs> oh dear well yes um, we, uh... yes so i i do various things on the show i write and do editorial and work on things that i'm not allowed to say yet so <laughs> I can't, I can't give away some of the stuff I do on the show, um, but it's exciting. And, we'll and where, where are you coming? Some other time. <laughs> where are um, you coming to yeah, uh, us coming from? I am from the southwest of England, so farming country from Somerset. I'm trying to hide my Somerset accent. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> not doing a great job of it. Just, just do an Essex accent. That's the best part of English. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I can. <laughs> or Norfolk well, accent. Or Norfolk, yes. So or Norfolk accent. Or New York City. <laughs> I can't do any accents. I can't voice act. That's the one thing I will never do on the show. <laughs> she can play a hell of a... Uh, she can play a hell of a The Crew 2 uh, session, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been addicted to that lately. We Me, all Jeff have. and Violet have been playing it. Yeah. yeah. Olivia awesome. was gracious enough to gift us with a copy of it, and we've just been racing like crazy. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah. I'm coming awesome. near the end of the challenges now. So. Nice. <laughs> well, this is uh, welcome, and thank you to all of you folks for, for being with us. This is an amazing experience nine years and uh you know we're right around the time i wanted to make a just a, a short but important announcement right around the bottom of the hour um uh a little while ago i reached out to the team and uh, i i wanted to do something uh different because you know when we when people celebrate a birthday or an anniversary it's customary to receive gifts or fun stuff like that but we're going to do something a little different for our special day this year um all of us, the No Sleep team, has come together, and we are going to be donating a portion of the money that we normally would get paid for contributing to the podcast, and we're giving that money to a very worthy cause. Uh, it's a cause called the Movement for Black Lives, and it's made up of over 150 organizations that they coordinate actions and messages and campaigns, and it's kind of an ecosystem of individuals and organizations, and they're creating a shared vision to win uh, rights and recognition and resources for black people and uh, something we all know is very important been uh, very much in the forefront of our minds these days and so what's uh, what we're doing is we're taking we're, we're basically donating our time and talent to the podcast in, in order to make this happen and so i just wanted to say that it is it's uh, our honor to celebrate our anniversary by donating to the movement for black lives and uh, since it's our ninth anniversary today we've made a donation of nine thousand dollars to that movement so thank you to everybody for uh, for doing that that's uh wow. we're all a part of that and uh yeah we're, we're really proud that that uh has been able to be uh has been able to happen today so thank you to everyone who has made that possible now that's about it. Good night. No, <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> it's funny. We uh, we've got some questions here, and so um, we'll see what uh, we'll s see if there's any generic questions we can answer. Um, here's one for some of the voice actors. If you want to chime in on this one, do do any of you, do any of us, have improv or stage experience? Well, I certainly don't. I can tell you that. I've never been on a bloody stage <laughs> in my life. <laughs> no, I, I didn't meet Erica. 
backstage. <laughs> undressing Courage. me. Join. Yes, I was undressing you, yes. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, okay, right. So um, we, were, we were in a show together and um, basically uh, the, the men in the cast pretty much had their costume changes of like a jumper or a sweater. Um, my costume changes were complete and there was one in which I had about half a dozen lines of dialogue or something. I came off, I stood there, David stripped my clothes, I stepped into an evening dress, he zipped me up, I walked back on stage. So yes, <laughs> and frequently. Um, and yes. that, that, that was it, yeah. In, in fairness, he's done that to most of us, so. No, we can't do that. <laughs> Zippered clothing, don't go near David. No. <laughs> indeed, indeed. No, well, to so, answer that, I've had, um, yeah. I've taken a couple of classes at the Groundlings Improv Theater, but I have not performed improv. I did a long form improv here in Kansas City for, I don't know, three or four years, kind of UCB stuff, performing in classes and all that jazz. In terms of theater, my acting experience comes like back in high school. We did a lot of like state festivals here in Massachusetts and such like that. So it's been a bit, but yes. I uh, am. I spent most of my career uh, doing stage work and uh, have been in eight Broadway shows. Oh, yeah, man. that's amazing. Don't sell yourself short. TV and <laughs> film as well. <laughs> well, well, there's time. The the call is young. <laughs> we'll get to do it. Yeah, but name the shows. I want to know the shows. Well, let's not be that. I won't be that narcissistic. Google, <laughs> Google me. Oh, I'll, I'll name my shows. I was in Joseph, the Oliver, and the Rothschilds in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. So, uh, that's, where I come. that's great. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's yeah, a big get. I still get the residuals. Yeah, yeah it's it's amazing. Now, Penny recently Penny. released from a box and have no experience. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good box, though. Mission of Peter has not been on stage. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, Penny and Andy, of course, you guys, you guys live in the theater. We do, and we met doing a show for the same company that I actually worked for doing a show with Erica. Um, we met doing Twelfth Night. Oh, nice. nice. That would have been nice to Everyone see. really just does live in London, huh? You guys just all know each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did you all undress and redress Erica as well? Yes. Wow. Yes, Pe Penny and I, yes. I it's feel left out. School. It's a lot of the training. It's kind of an English it's custom at this point. <laughs> an English custom is to undress Erica. <laughs> I'll go spread in those and kind of rumors. To redress her. <laughs> to redress her, of course. We're very civil. <laughs> well, I think I know where I got to move. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's remarkable when you think about it. And it's not, you know, not to single people out, but, you know, we have so many people, uh, so many voice actors on the show who have, you know, experience on the stage and on uh, TV um, have been in films and uh, we've got of course there's a number of people who can't join us uh, today one of them being Mick Wingert and Mick uh, does so many voices on uh, animation and uh, video games and stuff like that so it is it's an amazing honor to have these people who um, you know are, are trained and, and you know whereas myself I did a few uh, community uh, theater kind of things and acted a bit in college, but I feel like I've just uh, done this by learning by repetition and learning on the job. But uh, so it's amazing to have all these trained actors. And, and Mary, on the one of the last live streams, you shared what uh, what you have done with your voice work, especially with uh, kids animation. Oh, oh yeah. Um, I I think we were talking about the about Octonauts um, that I did uh, several seasons of. Um, which animated show for for little ones, um, but yeah. But but my I, but in my background, like I think probably a lot of people here too. It, I, it started off in theater, um, so yeah. <laughs> That's great. Seen uh, just about every episode of Octonauts. Octonauts. <laughs> <laughs> that show. It's fantastic, it's and you're great. Good. Oh, thank you. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. Um, now, there's uh, a question that uh, I mentioned that I would ask and some people are asking on the stream, and this is a, a very uh, a common one. Oh, we're going to bring one gentleman in here, just one second. But uh, so it's basically, uh, and we get this a lot from the show, is a lot of the fans like to know what, what story 
that has been on the podcast is something that sort of means the most to you. So I'll open that up to everybody. It but, could uh, be something that you worked so on. So it's basically, uh, and we get this a lot from the show. There's a lot oh. of the fans like to know. I think we've got John, John coming in with some the audio there. Something that sort of means the most to you. So I'll open yeah. that up to right. everybody. It's a lot of echo. So Do you have, uh, uh, get... John Nesbitt is joining us. He's, he's from England. He's one of our, uh, our editorial team. Do you want to just, you just need to uh, turn your, uh, what is it they used to say? Turn your radio down. That's when Call your radio. caller. Turn your radio down. <laughs> yeah, we were sorry. about to go into a no sleep story right there where we were on a loop. And it was. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Just, just the, the audio going around and around yeah. and around. <laughs> are, are, you, are you there now, John? Yeah. Hello, John. Yeah. Welcome. We're, uh, we've been going around and just saying our names, where we're from, and what we do on the show. Um, yeah, I'm John. I'm from um, Southeast England. Um, near Brighton, and I'm one of the editors. Um, yeah, that's that's wonderful. We met John at one of the shows. What show did you come to on the tour, John? Uh, Brighton. Remember. Oh, yeah. it was the very first show in Brighton. Yeah, that's great. Not Bristol. <laughs> Not Bristol. No. That, that's the running joke. We're confusing those two cities. Um, yeah, it's it is it's remarkable, and for a lot of the fans might not realize this, but um, the way we find our stories these days, uh, and for a number of years now, is uh, there's all these very talented writers out there who will submit stories to us directly, and we get our inbox just full of of stories from all over and all different people and and stuff like that, and we have to go through and find stories that will work best on the show. And so we have the team of people like John, who you just met, Olivia, uh, Jessica, Ashley, um, oh, uh, Alex, uh, Alexandra, uh, Alex. who is yeah. who's not able to join us, unfortunately. She lives down in Florida, and she um, she mentioned uh, she just texted me earlier something. There was like a, a pipe burst on her property, and she was knee deep in mud when she texted me. She had to deal with that. So I hope that know. was mud. Yeah, let's hope it was mud. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was mud. But uh, so yes, we'll give a shout out to uh, to Alexa. Thank you, and for all that you do, and we'll say happy birthday because it's her birthday tomorrow. So happy hey, birthday. happy birthday, Alexa! Happy birthday! Alexa. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday! Indeed. So yeah, so it's good to see uh, to have some of our editorial team here. They're the ones who find all these amazing stories for us. Um, so, yes, I was going into this idea of if there is a story that, uh, that speaks to you that, that you, that stands out and it can be a story you worked on if maybe if you're an illustrator, one that you illustrated or whatnot, but, uh, feel free to just, uh, to share what, what story connects with you the most. So I can embarrass Erica for a second again, if, if she'll indulge me. Um, the very first story, and still to this day my favorite story, was your first story on the podcast, which was My Wife Cooked Me Dinner, which um, I believe was Erica and, and uh, Mr. Alt, you were in that as well, which to this day I find to be the most emotionally charged story I have heard on this podcast. It's just, it's still wonderful and it holds up incredibly well. So that oh, one. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's glorious. That was... Um... Very, very beautiful story by Rona. Yeah. Mm. And and yeah. the start of our um, warring, killing each other off in horrible our fashion. Our long, long well. relationship. <laughs> Indeed. <yeah. laughs> our, our joy of marriage, divorce, death. I gave up on tracking those. Maybe. May. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one of the one of the um, stories that I like, I, the one that I say to everyone, is the tall dog. Uh, season seven, episode oh, one. I love the tall dog. Yeah. Oh, that was that was a that was a scary story for me. And I, 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 as I was reading, I was thinking, oh shit, no, shit, no, 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 no. Oh, it's gone now. Um. So yeah, that was that was good. But one that speaks to me is actually one that I, I'm, I'm going to be a little bit narcissistic here and because I wrote it and uh, the, it was um, all children look the same. Uh, in that first Christmas special of mine, because I, I actually you. went, I went through that. That was that was all, uh -huh. um, or very mostly, um, my experience of being a Santa Claus. So, <laughs> um, You've done some really good Christmas ones, David. Mm -hmm. 
you um the other thank one you. about the fireplace was really good as well oh thank you yes um uh, uh an opening at christmas yeah that's the one good yeah. recall wow yeah <laughs> well christmas coming up soon so you better get busy you get thinking oh. yes <laughs> Yeah. Jeez, I haven't. I, I I have a goal of writing a Halloween story, and I still haven't yet. Oh, but we still got openings. <laughs> Good for me. <laughs> to work. <laughs> <laughs> well, since I'm talking, I'll just say my favorite story um, to be in was 500 Yards. Um, Fantastic. The one Fritz. Where Fitz. Hi, you said Fitz. Fritz. Yeah. Fitz the werewolf. Um, my favorite story that sticks with me all the time. I can't remember the name of it, but it was the one about the, the. I think it was Kyle and Addison, and it was about the the island with the, the pirates' half blood children that were left on the island to fend for yeah. themselves. Yeah. That one right. still scares me. Oh, I remember. And uh, the yeah, one that, that affected one. me the most emotionally was the one about the, with Jeff and David, with about the earthquake in, mm. I believe it was Santa Cruz. Mm -hmm. That one is like, because I come from earthquake country and just I'm terrified of earthquakes and it was emotional and I was crying and that was the worst, uh, the most emotional for me to listen to. Right, right. October 17th, 1989 by yeah. Jeffrey E. Bright. Yeah, mm. that was, uh, yes, that's right. yeah. you broke my heart in that one, David. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember us finding that story when it first got sent to us and me and you, David, reading it and thinking, oh, this is really different for the show, but this is going to be powerful. Yeah. And that's and one... Just um, went down really well. Mm -hmm. I, I had worked previously with Jeffrey Ebright um, back in my days at Chilling Tales for Dark Nights. So we had a long standing relationship and he had set that one aside for a long time asking them over and over and over if I could produce it for them. And so having it finally see the light of day, you know, with a full cast, no sleep production is the justice it needed for sure. So um, it's very honored to be able to be a part of that. Right. I would love to throw it all the way back to season one for one of my favorite stories that was um, read by David back in the days, uh, It Halloween. It's still my favorite. That's what made me fall in love with the podcast because that's the first time I got literal chills, like actually hair hairs on my arm standing up just mm -hmm. from the from the um, the sound effects on that one. I love that story. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, that, uh, that's one of my favorites too. It, it, it Yeah, it's weird. It's a strange spelling. It's uh, it has to do with there's a, a special kind of typewriter or or uh, typesetting machine. And the letters on one row are, it sort of spells out Eteo insured Lou. Just looked that. it up. It's Apparently, like... it's the most common letters in the English language, and that's why it's that way in the typeset. Right. right, yeah. And it's uh, about a guy who calls in and uh, very creepy. And it, it's sort of, that's one of those stories that stands out to me because that, I think, was on episode 10 many, well, nine years ago. And uh, it was one of the first stories where I actually tried to make, do a lot more sound design and kind of, do more production whereas in the early days it was just one narrator with a bit of music in the background very little sound effects very little anything else so uh, yeah that was one of the first things where we started to break out towards the kind of productions we're doing today which is what i always wanted the show to be so, mm -hmm. yeah go. my favorite my favorite from season one uh is the crawling house on black pond road I don't know what it was about that something about I mean I've always had kind of a phobia of bugs and spiders and stuff like that so it just got under my skin quite literally yeah, um, quite literally yeah and I think that was another one where you really kind of went to town with the sound design stuff just, yeah just uh, like midway through season one there <clears throat> which is awesome so yeah yeah I like yeah that and that was uh Christina Schultz who uh, right was an early narrator for us uh right. she has that uh sort of magical ASMR voice that uh, drew, drew a lot of people in. Mm -hmm. so, uh, yeah, it's hard to think back all those many years ago. <laughs> I Are think... we starting an ASMR podcast as an outgrowth of the no sleep? <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine what we do. I think we... one... Oh, sorry. No, no, you go ahead, Nicole. Um, I think one of my favorite stories that I've personally done is it was season eight, episode 24. Uh, the town I grew up in was torn apart by a serial killer because it was yes. very, it was a hard one. It was a really hard one to narrate. There's a lot of tough subjects that were in it. And it was 
something that I feel very strongly about, just a lot of things that it touched on, and the music was perfect for it. Um, everything just came together. So it was, it was a very, very, it was a rough one, but it was really good. And that one is kind of the one that always jumps to my mind um, whenever that question is, is asked. Is that the one, is that the one with the flowers? Yes. Yes. The killer would plant the flowers, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. really good. That's a really good one. I have a couple I favorites. Think... Oh, sorry. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I had a couple favorites that I didn't illustrate for, but that are always the ones I recommend for anybody who's trying out the podcast for the first time. Tales from a British Seaside Pub and The Whistlers. I mean, those are just, they're just really good. And good good job to everybody who did those. I mean, I can listen to those any amount of time. Two classics there. Yeah. yeah. Can I indulge myself and have two? Of course. For the one for one that I've performed in, um, just because I've had the m amazing opportunity to perform it live a couple of times and be the viewing, just because each mm -hmm. time I've been able to perform it, we've managed to make Erica perform more and more angry every single time, <laughs> um, and it is absolutely amazing. It is such, a, and I get to be an idiot, so you know, it's <laughs> me. And then you complete and utter egg. egg. Um, and and then. Uh, and, and then I think one for me, all, I'm not in it, but um, the finale for season nine, the hidden web page, just because it is mm. so confusing and messed up. It's my, it's my road trip thing because it's two mm. hours long. And every time I listen to it, there's something new that I hadn't realized before. That's cool. Mm. The music yeah. playing right now is from that. That's funny. I love it's weird. Uh, <laughs> it was a really cool story. I illustrated that one and I remember um, first reading it and just being thrown back to my, to my early, uh, like, teen days growing up with like icq and stuff around and it's it's really yeah. well written in my mm -hmm. opinion yeah does anybody really like the ones where david goes from introducing the podcast straight into a story oh yeah that really just you oh, know yeah. i'm like oh we're doing this and then i just it just slides right in there was one yeah that's I, always fun yeah can't remember the title of it but there was some world where an entire life takes place in the car driving oh God, to some that unknown one. Yeah, location yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's, it's just step after step life life milestone after life milestone and it's just uh yeah you know, it takes you you know it just draws you right in but if i remember I... correctly Slog, he, that's a good one yeah he's doesn't he start off by talking about how like the podcast is making him really tired and everything and then all of a sudden he, he gets <laughs> whatever it is story, and i was some, like wait a minute genius what, story mm -hmm. <laughs> that reminds me and i can't remember the name of it olivia the one you wrote that people thought was I, a real I, podcast the, the final yes, party. party oh my god the final party was so great <laughs> i had people party. messaging me about it like what where can i find this what is this about <laughs> because david and i came <laughs> in <laughs> acting like like it wasn't even a story, it, which it isn't. It's a real thing, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> it's also the first episode I listened to. For two years. <laughs> two, yep. two years. <laughs> <laughs> Download it. Um, yeah. I had people sending me hate for how I gave away spoilers for the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I loved it. Just like some real rage about. <laughs> Why did I give away all the spoilers? I was like, it, you know, it's a story. <laughs> that was so good. Stupid now. <laughs> so, no regrets. Uh, I, just, I really like your... Uh... It's sort of the bane of my life. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to say that there is a story um, that, I, um, that I got to do a few years ago. I think it was like two years ago. Um, called What They Deserved. And it was a it, the the woman. It she it takes place from when she's a child to a senior, and she's a serial killer. But she's right. kind of taking vengeance on all of these horrible, horrible um, people. And that I think, that, yeah, I think that's my most favorite story that I got to do. That was a lot of fun. And I can't right. remember I can't remember the author's name. I, I want to say her first name was Annette. Maybe, it was uh, Anne Marie Hartnett. Anne Marie, thank you. It wasn't Annette, <laughs> but it was a great word. Fellow Canadian, <clears throat> just I throw that in there. <laughs> You're tempting me to take the hat off. I, I hope you know that. <laughs> <laughs> one of the, one of the stories that got me into the podcast. I, oh, oh, go ahead. Sorry, no, you go first because mine, mine will lead on from you quite well. So 
Oh, okay. Uh, the stories that got me into the podcast, I feel like this is a cop out because I feel like these are some of the most popular ones, but pe the Pen Pal series in the beginning was what drew me into it. And then I was lucky enough to somehow convince David that I'd be an okay reader for the story. And then I've just kind of been grandfathered in since then. Uh, but then br James bringing up live show stuff, I think uh, I had totally forgotten about the live show and how much fun that was. Uh, I don't remember the n name of the story. I'm sure somebody will help. The the VHS store one. VHS. Oh, vault. yes. The well, vault. Yeah. Vic the Victor's vault. VHS I, vault. I wrote that and I can't remember yeah. the name of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like enter the vault or exit the vault. Victor's yeah. VHS vault. That was a different one. Oh, was it? Oh, right. Okay. I th yeah, so I think this, it was Enter the This was the, the one where I was, I was the demon, wasn't and it? Or the demon, yeah. Yes, yes. Spoilers? Oh, you were I don't know if that narrows it down, David. Spoilers. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I don't know, right? <laughs> so fun, because I got to be live with all these people who I've read with digitally for so long, and I got to play like a super stoner, man. It was so, <laughs> so sweet, bro. <laughs> you were the best super stoner. Yeah, <laughs> it man. Was, it was great. I got to be super hammy, because live is totally different <laughs> yeah. than being at home. Hmm. Uh, I gotta say, standing beside David Alt, acting, is a surreal experience. Because <laughs> it's man, intense. Oh man, it's intense, and like I don't have that stage experience at all, and he he does, and uh, it's just so natural for him. And what blows my mind is how much he can project. He's got this giant cavity in his chest, and when he screams. It legitimate like when you're supposed to act startled, you legitimately are startled. <laughs> oh, for sure. Like, holy, like, he fills that cavity God. with gin it's after a... the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard people genuinely believed he was possessed during that story. <laughs> I got genuinely concerned for him. Yeah, yeah. I'm concerned. I'm always genuinely. I'm always concerned, concerned for him. him yeah. Oh, jinx. <laughs> <laughs> And then I've got a couple stories. I, I was really lucky to read Bitter oh. last week or the week before, whichever one. And that mm. one was so mm. much fun to do. Yeah. yeah. I was and then I've got one coming up next week that was one of the They're more fun ones in recent time. I'm not going to say the title. We'll wait for that to be released, but stick around and listen to next week's. I really love it. Spoilers, it's too. called The Mustache. Guys! <laughs> <laughs> the final mustache ride. The final <laughs> <laughs> mustache. That's not that. That's for a different show. <laughs> No sleep after dark. Uh, so speaking of going back to the uh... performances, then. Oh, sorry, who's talking? I said oh. something, but you were gonna go before. You go ahead, Jen. Okay. <laughs> um, I think my favorite is the first one that I illustrated for, probably because of nostalgia. I was very excited to be a part of the team, and reading it was, you know, um, I really like the one with the curiosity app. Anyone remembers that one? There was, it was season seven and there was an app. I think the app was called Curiosity, but I don't remember the name of the story. Does anybody remember it? Yeah. An app called it's, Curiosity. It's, I think it's just an app called Curiosity. And I, it's my favorite because I think cell phones sometimes break a horror story. Mm -hmm. So when a horror story involves contemporary technology, instead of fighting against it, that that really sparks something in me. Like a cell phone can be scary. It's not just a tool to get out of trouble. It can get you in trouble. Yeah. 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 I agree. I'll tell anyone who listened that the shower is, is the most legendary story in my mind. I have such nostalgia behind that story and I could talk about it all day. David, David knows. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually, I was going to say the same thing. I have, I have memories. That's kind of what, when I was just listening before I joined the show, I have memories of um, one year, my, one of my best friends was getting married in Chicago and I had to do all these long trips for various things back from Cincinnati to, to Chicago. And you go through, you know, Indiana with all of the windmills. Sorry, Nicole. And uh, you just have like this, like, you know, there's just nothing around. And I would listen to the showers on those drives and it would just creep the hell out of me. So good. Good. That's when I was like, I want to work on this show. Hi. <laughs> you know, it's it's funny. I'll just interject about the showers, Brandon. You mentioned the music. Um, that was one of those uh, stories that it, it was a fairly long story. Certainly at the mm -hmm. time, I wasn't used to doing stories that long. But um, I think the music in that is literally just one long. It's three drum. notes. It's yeah, three it's, notes. Exactly. Yeah. Well, it's so just, well, though. Yeah, it's a it's, it's a one of flat six and then a one and a fifth, 
it's like that like in that bouncing that it just can repeat forever and you don't really it doesn't wear you down or anything if i remember correctly yeah yeah exactly and it, that's really all i did is just loop that part over and over and over so uh yeah it's it's interesting how you can have music like what Brandon writes, which is um, so often is Worse. very, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it is very yeah. complex and, and very cinematic. And then sometimes it just needs that one very small sound. So yeah, yeah, cool. I do. I love the music in the in the showers. It was awesome. Right, right, yeah. right. And then just to piggyback off of the whole like which one matters a lot to you, I'll say I'll be a little self indulgent. Um, uh, From hell you must entertain heaven was a story that I helped write with my friend Alice and uh, very it was so long ago now it seems it's just I, I remember like going to the park with her and just working on the story like at a picnic table and just as it was coming together and uh, and I was I was really having some issues with trying to get better at playing piano and that kind of thing and so it was a really personal story for me and when it was on the making it on the show like that it was just uh, it's awesome for me that's great if I, I can... music, I did. I busted uh... now. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh wait! Oh wait! <laughs> Speaking oh, of no. music, the uh, the music for Sour Toe Shuffle was a lot of fun too. I think that was a season pass story. Hmm. I think. Uh, did I oh, hear that? that good. Jesse did the. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, did that. The, the author El Matlin actually provided the uh, the Pete music. The sheet music yeah. for it. Yeah. yeah, we met Elle. She's the one who does all the, the Foley stuff. Remember in Chicago, they opened for us? Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, she wrote Wild that story. Wild Theater. Wild Theater. Oh, that's awesome. Cool. They were brilliant. They were. They were yeah. so good. So the story had all these sound effects and stuff. I'm like, how did they do this with celery? <laughs> <laughs> it was just wonderful to celery. see it going, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> So good. Uh, there's Jess, some Jesse, chat room. He, Chat room love for the new decade. So yeah, for sure. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say if, if Jessica uh, and Olivia, if you guys want to touch a little bit about uh, the new decade, which obviously I happened totally will, but I'm dying to mention two stories first. <laughs> I've been because right like, these two, these two stories they don't get mentioned very often at all because they're sort of smaller ones. So one of them is. It's a short, very short story, and it's performed by Kyle and you, David. And it's called Backwater Lullaby, and it's from Season 7, Episode 4 by Kerry H. And it's it's one of those stories that's sort of on the verge of horror, or you could interpret it in a different way of not being horror. And it's just one of the most beautiful pieces of writing that I think the podcast has ever run. It's just, and Kyle's lead performance is just phenomenal in it. And it's sort of, for me as a writer, because this was before I worked for the podcast, it sort of showed me like a bigger scope of what could be done with audio horror and just how much it stuck with me. And I think everyone should go back and listen to that story because it's just like a it's six minutes long six and a half minutes long and it's just an absolutely fantastic fever dream of a nightmare and it's wonderful and the other one is and um, this is actually the story that inspired me to contact you David about writing for the show <clears throat> excuse me was adorable. See, <laughs> my cough. <Yep>. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it was uh, season eight, episode twelve, um, by author Colette a Kyle, and it's called "He Won't Stop Tapping," performed solely by Jessica, and it is about a woman who suffers from intrusive thoughts and hallucinations and she's questioning whether what's going on around her is real or if it's a relapse of her mental illness. The psychological and, stuff. Yeah, the writing and Jessica's performance was so empathetic and so many horror stories use mental illness cheaply and like 
somebody mentally ill is the source of the fear or whatever. And this was just the complete opposite of that. It was, it conveyed the horror of having a mental illness. It was performed with so much empathy and care that it's just a really meaningful story to me because that was the one that made me think, I want to contribute to this podcast. I want, um, I want to be involved in this because mm. I'd be, I'd listened to the podcast. Like I'd binged it from season one and it was when I got to this, I thought I have to reach out to David and see if there's some way, cause I didn't know how you got stories at the time. Mm. And then you, if you see my debut story was actually a few weeks after that one. So it mm. all worked out. Yeah. It was a complete coincidence. I reached out to you on Twitter. You said, yeah, please send some across. And then literally within the same hour, Gabby picked one of my stories on No Sleep. Right. So awesome. it was a Ooh. weird coincidence. But yeah, that so that one, he won't stop tapping season eight, episode 12. Was that the Everyone one about the guy who was floating outside the window? Tapping? Yes, yes, that's oh, the Okay, one. I remember producing that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a yeah. good one. Jessica was really good in that one. Oh, yeah, thank you, guys. Such a right. wonderful performance. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'll, I'll interject again. Just, everything. just quickly, because you mentioned Gabby. Uh, Gabrielle Lux uh, was, mm. she's, she's kind of moved on a little bit now from us. She's not uh, directly a part of our editorial team, but Gabby was the first person to basically volunteer at the start to find stories for us and to hunt those out. So, um, yeah, as I say, she's not technically with us right now, but uh, we uh, we owe a debt of gratitude to Gabby for what she brought to story selection and bringing Shout people Shout out online. to Gabbers. Yeah, I'd like to add that as well as someone who worked with her. Start, I, I started out working for her and then we started working together and then she had less time and I took over a bit more, but she just contributed so much and found some excellent stories and like, we've really got a lot to thank her for for that and she will still be involved with us even though mm -hmm. she's not working on editorial because she's also an absolutely excellent writer who i'm not gonna let get away with not submitting stories to us so mm -hmm. she'll still be on the show yeah but for sure. yeah major props to gabby she was excellent to work with and so why, why don't you why don't you right. and uh, uh, Jessica touch briefly on the new decay and what sort of what how that came right. about? Okay, so we came up with the idea because you go on tour and we you did two tours in a row and we thought we'd do something different because it's uh, otherwise we're going to be launching season fourteen while you're on tour. So we came up with this idea of, well, it's funny because the way people talk about the new decade is not really what it is. <laughs> In that a lot of people say, like, we want you to run stuff like that on the show. And really, I think apart from one episode, nearly everything we ran on the new decade would have been something we would have run on the show. But we kind of put the episodes together in a theme, so it seemed very different to people, yeah. which was quite quite interesting. Right. Um, so, yeah, we just sort of set out, we commissioned a lot of it um, based on specific themes, and me and Jessica put it together. And obviously, there is one particular episode that we'll discuss in a minute that is... <laughs> the episode people mean when they talk about the new decay but i'll uh, see what jessica wants to add first about the like how we came up with the idea and what the concept was and stuff. yeah so i was originally going to go on the european tour but didn't quite work out um through no fault of anybody's but because i begged her to stay and help me <laughs> Actually, um, actually, Brandon said he wasn't going to go on if Jessica was there. So I mean, had to choose. That's it was, just, it was a Sophie's choice. Oh, you picked yeah. the wrong one. I was like, I'm just a voice actor. <laughs> no, yeah, they have no to have the chosen. musician. <laughs> so I, I stepped back so that way Brandon could go on the European tour. 
clearly. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so um, Olivia asked me if I wanted to to host a little uh, mini season during during that time, and I was like, "Me host?" Ah! And she's like, "Don't worry, I'll write all the hosting scripts and everything." And I was like, "Okay, I can probably do that. I can read words off a page. That's that's what I do." So Olivia wrote up the hosting scripts and we talked about um, different themes for different episodes. And I was already working in editorial at that time. So when she's like, hey, we're doing a sci-fi episode, I'm like, I'm on it. <laughs> so then we just kind of put episodes together. But yeah, a lot of the stories we did for The New Decade would have ended up on the main show at some point. Um, we were just able to sew them into something in sort of a Frankenstein-esque manner that a lot of people seem to like. So I'm glad everyone liked it. Mm-hmm. So what wouldn't have ended up on the main show, <laughs> I think, is what people mean when they say the new decade. And that was obviously episode two, which had two stories by Holly Dionis and me. And in the worst mm. kept secret, in the entire podcast Holly Dionis is me Um, so I wrote that episode Uh, one obviously is the one about um, mammograms and having a mammogram and your boobs exploding from having a mammogram which I think is a pretty common anxiety it wasn't I before. Be, I had to be in that one. <laughs> uh, I have it like, <laughs> it, it is once I talk to people about mammograms anyway. It's it's how I've had people describe them to me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like that. It's, it's like anxiety it's you happen, can so... see. Mm. <laughs> and the other story, obviously, the, the big one for that episode was the casting couch, which... David, if you recall, I actually wrote about a year before the new decade and we both went over it and we decided that it wasn't right for the podcast because it was more erotica, less horror. And I stand by that. I don't think that story would have fit on the No Sleep podcast. But then when we came up with the idea for the new decade, which didn't necessarily have to stick to the same rules of horror that we would go for with the main podcast, even though most of the stories did. We agreed, yeah, let's try that one out and see how that goes. And people just absolutely loved the fact that we did a very psychosexual, erotic, Cthulhu mythos story, um, which ties into some of the other stuff we've done on the podcast obviously it ties into gilded echo and true crime podcast because naya from that story is the same naya from true crime podcast so there's sort of like little easter eggs to find there Mm -hmm. but people really 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 like the idea of us doing more horror erotica horotica is the term i coin for it so that was a very fun experiment to do and that story was very um, personal and meaningful to me as someone who is secretly an outer god from beyond the stars well what so as we all are yeah yeah (laughs) Yeah, spoiler (laughs) yeah we weren't we weren't going to give that away until next season but we are all out of gods um and pretty much every week i get people asking can you do more new decade and the answer is no because the pun wouldn't work we can only, <laughs> we can only call it the new decade that this year because it's not a new decade we'll need another 10 years and we'll, we'll get it together uh, yeah. it took now me a shockingly it. long time to figure Brandon. that out actually it took Let's... me three episodes to figure that out it was very yeah. embarrassing but I, I love that because no. Olivia and I were, were talking about this and she said what can we call this and I just with the 2020 coming on so I had to do a bad pun and I said the new decade and I was amazed yeah. at how many people didn't make the connection I, I'm pretty sure that that, that was actually it, it was explained in the opening 
uh, yeah. in, yeah. in Jessica's it, opening. It was explained in the opening of the first episode. No one listens to the opening. No, no, listen, we, we heard the opening. We were like, wait, <laughs> this isn't David, and we skipped forward five minutes. Exactly. That's They're like, stories. like <laughs> guys, I think it's you could use you could get a couple seasons out of that title i mean the the, the decay the decade is new for a little while right <laughs> but, but, but. at least two years maybe i think we can all agree that 2020 just doesn't count so. i mean the, <laughs> <we can> just, <laughs> the millennium tv tomorrow. show had a couple year. seasons it wasn't just one oh, i love yeah, that show yeah that's it was true. great the, the title covers the whole thing with like the sci-fi and like the classic creepy pasta episode and stuff like that I think when people are asking for more of it, because most of what we ran in it would go on the podcast anyway, right. I think they're really asking for an erotic horror spin-off. Which we can do. We so, can do No Sleep After Dark, right? That's da- David, that is literally what we we called it in planning stages, wasn't it? No Sleep yeah, After Dark. That's right. So <laughs> That's I, another I'm reason put, to get no sleep. I'm going to put you on the spot, David. Can we do a No Sleep After Dark spin-off to give people what they want? Please. God, yes. <laughs> Subscription <laughs> only. On, David, 18 answer. plus. All right, yeah. so basically, we're opening up an OnlyFans cast. account, is what we're saying. Bobcast? Oh. <laughs> 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 is that what I heard? <laughs> you want to call it that? That's fine by me. Oh, that's not fine. Uh, no. <laughs> no. No, well, no, no. We'll, uh, okay, it's not, it's not it's fine. the last I've thing I wanted to hear told, David say to right now. Told it's not fine. <laughs> Just an hour just, of me going, it, it, Daddy. Wait, no yeah, sleep say, up all yeah. night was just mentioned in the Daddy. chat. That's a good name. Mm-hmm. No By sleep Desmos. up all night, yeah. <laughs> yes. What was it? No sleep all night? No sleep up, up, up all, all night. night. Up about all no night. sleep like colon, colon, yeah. up all night. We got to start <laughs> registering these domains. <laughs> <laughs> right, jump on it. <laughs> Well, time is uh, time is fast uh, going on us here, and I don't want to go too long. We've got great uh, fans watching in and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, so we should think about um, slowly starting to wrap up here. I'm looking at some of the questions. They're all – some of the questions, which we appreciate, are rather vague. Uh, I shouldn't say vague, but they're rather broad to, uh, to answer for everybody. Um, but uh, in terms of touring, uh, people are asking about touring. Um, obviously, with the state of the world these days, touring is uh, – very much up in the air. And so um, I think it's safe to say we're not going to be doing any live shows in 2020, but uh, we'll see what uh, see what happens. But we would love we to. We have some cool around. YouTube stuff planned, though. Yeah, that's true. I mean, there's always uh, there's always our YouTube channel, which you are on right now. So <laughs> check out the live streams we do there. And uh, we're going to be doing more um, scripts that have been commissioned as opposed to some of the old-time radio scripts we've done. So... Yeah, there's lots of fun when, stuff coming when up When we actually get them sent in. Yes, indeed. And um, when I write one. <laughs> yes, they're not right. late with that all. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's it's just, uh, you know, we've, we've touched on a lot of the questions, uh, the kind of roles that we've done and stuff. Um, here's a good one to, to, I'll just throw out this briefly to our voice actors. Um, a lot of people like it when we, you know, most of our stories have a villain, have a bad guy in it. So... What's it like playing a villain, a heinous beast in a story? Oh so my God, fun. playing a villain is my absolute, absolute, absolute yeah. favorite thing to do in life because I'm like just, a, I'm a nice person. <laughs> I, 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 it's, de- it's definitely more fun to play a villain. Yep. I love villain roles. Oh God, I love them mm-hmm. so much. Mm-hmm. Yep. I get I a lot of kid depends. roles. So <laughs> All the kid, kid villains. Yeah, being an evil kid is very interesting. <laughs> yeah. So, am I hearing we need a story with everyone in it and everyone's a villain? Pickable, <laughs> 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 horrible, yeah. awful people, except for maybe like Brandon can be the like the lead narrator. <laughs> so it's yeah. basically murder on the Orient Express, but Brandon <laughs> as the <laughs> villain. <central. laughs> okay, Brandon yeah, that. Poirot. Where's the Orient Express? Hmm. I, I'd like a Knives Out, No Sleep style story i think that would be perfect <laughs> yeah. i love the style of villain that's like the principal from from the early seasons luffy oh yeah. Mm. oh yeah <laughs> my favorite villain yes. is, the, is the one who is the sweetest kindest guy uh, yeah. and you don't realize he doesn't come in twirling his mustache you don't see that for a while that's my favorite <laughs> not the principal you mean the mayor the mayor the mayor the mayor yeah i feel like that's kind of the roles that i get when i'm a bad guy i'm like a like an innocent, nice dude who's doing something evil to try to 
win over some woman or something and so at the end i like break down and like i was just needed to be with you know that kind of thing yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. why i cut off your hands or you know whatever the <laughs> happened to be <laughs> yeah why don't you look at me here i'll take your eyes exactly. somebody just suggested a uh, no sleep battle royale and i like that mm, I like uh, that. Ooh, that's cool. very good yeah, yeah. I love yeah, that someone definitely. in the chat has just said David Alt loves being the villain because he doesn't have to act. <laughs> Ooh, it's easy for him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was the one, David, that you did where you had you ended up swallowing a tapeworm as a as a means of losing weight? And... That was real life. Real life. <laughs> 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 and you the whole thing is is from your perspective but then you realize by the end of the story that the whole thing's actually from the perspective of the guy you have tied up that you're... oh that was a great one oh, oh. wait mm -hmm. it was the first like one last where he season was... i think it was it, did it start with a job interview no it's um... no that that was the was that the um, it's in the pride monologue. episode the pride episode it's the yeah. whole monologue yeah. all about um yes. what it's like um, to, to be a was, slightly uh, overweight Scott gay Savino. man and everything oh, yeah mm -hmm. that was Savino, great. yes um, oh my god by the end of that story and you're still sympathetic by the end of it you still yeah. want the guy to like be happy oh, and that's everything right. but and he's like doing the most heinous shit <laughs> yes. you're so yeah. good at that <laughs> right and coming david the other day was tied to the chair right that's the one, yes. Oh, yeah. David on David violence is always a shame to see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, David's yeah, David coming for more of whole that contribution to that was mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh yes, that's right. Yes, that's right. <laughs> what a fine job it was. Yeah, my my <laughs> best work. I, I went out and bought a ball gag just for that. <laughs> you sure is your old one. Yeah, sure yeah. 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 didn't you? Well, he's not going to use his favorite one. It's <laughs> <laughs> work and pleasure. I, teeth marks in it. <laughs> I know uh, Atticus was wearing his Mr. Strings mask earlier, but I don't think he pulled oh, it out for the live stream. So that's another yeah, villain. Oh, oh, it's within reach. It's within oh, reach. No. Always within reach. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> so I love that story. Oh, uh, Mr. Strings. I go back to it like all the time. But it's for the voice acting. It was so much fun. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that was... Yeah, it's a great mask. Yeah, it is. Expertly just, crafted. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Can I just say, I also love a Nicole Doolin um, almost screaming at screaming at you, uh, villain, you know, whether it's a, a crazed mother or a old woman in a house or who knows what. It chills every time. Yeah, it just makes the mm. hairs on the back of my neck stand up when I hear Nicole starting to... Actually, on the... Up the yell. Yeah, on the, I don't mean to interject, but on the topic of that, and just because I see it coming up in the chat here and tying in with the, you know, what story means a lot to you. I'm going to toot my own horn a little bit, but also toot the horn of our uh, our amazing uh, female voice actors. It was um, the Danny s story series mm. for me was, um, was a real kind of passion project. It was something I started way, way, way back when on my own channel. And it eventually made its way onto the No Sleep podcast. And it concluded on the No Sleep podcast but it was a labor of love over nine, 10 months or something like that. It, I think it was only, I think it was over a year for me to do all four parts. And it concluded with the contributions of Erica Sanderson, Jessica, Jessica McAvoy, Corinne Sanders, and of course, Nicole Doolin as the antagonist, uh, uh, I don't know what you call her ghost character. Danny. Oh, Danny. I think yes. I remember doing that. <laughs> One of the scariest, yeah. scariest voices and, um, on the show. Absolutely. And it, it still okay. gives me chills to this day. And it's it's a real source of like personal pride because it it went from this humble, tiny little beginning of where nobody saw it to being kind of this beloved series on the show. Um, and being able to to bring in other actors onto it because it had just all been me at, up until that point mm -hmm. was really really nice. Um, so I felt like it was like the fitting, the perfect perfect time to finish it, and the and the perfect people to have on it at the end. And and Nicole, you were absolutely terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I enjoy doing that. That was really a fun character yeah. to do. Yeah. That series yeah. still gets one hell of a lot of love. Anytime we do like posts on the group now. Favorite stories and that that one always comes up. That's MJ so Pack, right? You yeah, all did a MJ great Pack. job there. Yeah, M MJ Pack, who has uh, written so many great stories for us. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I don't know uh, if anybody's <laughs> mentioned it, uh, but also 
uh, Jesse and Peter are, I think, the two best male villain voices that, that I love. I love Jesse's work a lot. Uh, and Peter, obviously, they both have that really good classic horror uh, bravado, if you will. Mm -hmm. Bravado, bravado, bravado. Really I don't know. Scary people. Someone just I mentioned. I can't think of a single time Peter's played a bad guy. <laughs> which what? Which was horrific to listen to, but yeah. Which mm. story? Whitefall. Oh, Whitefall. Yeah. Oh, right. Mm. Yeah. 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 Kudos to Jesse, because man. He goes yeah. one hundred and sixty thousand <laughs> percent nice um, at uh, at whatever he does. He just puts everything into it, and not just his acting, which is amazing. I mean, he's the he's the biggest scenery chewer I've ever seen, but it's so delicious to listen to. Um, but also from a production standpoint, um, all our producers, Phil is incredibly amazing. He's technically proficient. He does things so fast and he does things at like Hollywood level quality. Jesse, he, he puts every ounce of passion and effort into every production he does. And he does the most intricate little bits of Foley and, and sound effects. He, he'll, he'll do sound effect for literally every single thing in the entire production. And it blows my mind. Every time I listen to both of those guys, I'm like, damn it, I gotta step this up. Cause it's like, <laughs> like, I, I wouldn't have thought to do that. I didn't think about doing that. I should totally do this and stuff. So I'm, I'm a huge you. shout out to them because they're absolutely phenomenal producers. Absolutely. All three of you have got very distinct, fantastic styles. I think you will yeah, complement each other really well. And yeah, thank you. I think just we, I think absolutely we do. excellent three part production team. Mm -hmm. We couldn't ask for better producers. Thanks, Olivia. Very true. Absolutely. And by the way, in, in the uh, live chat right now, uh, Atticus here, Mr. Strings Mask caused a little bit of a stir, and people are now requesting if anyone in the room has uh, an anime body pillow they'd like to pull up and share with anyone. Um, <laughs> that would be the time. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I thought we got, got away without that story coming up. I already died in that story. I don't, I don't need to... <laughs> Only the Abby. <laughs> In case anyone doesn't know, I I wrote that story under a pseudonym. That's <laughs> Idiotas. I know that one of our authors actually. People, people does keep telling one. me I should change the credits to uh, take responsibility for writing the story. So we can blame you. I, I'm. Yeah. Yeah. I <laughs> might. I might do that one day. That was a fun story. <laughs> James, what were you about to yeah, say? Yeah, you got to play an anime girl. Oh, I know that one of our authors has an anime body pillow that one of our um, <laughs> yes. the no sleep people made for them, but I'm not mentioning who. It's Manon. <laughs> <laughs> Ow. Um, Just throw him under the bus. Jessica, do you want to touch briefly on... It. Jessica, do you want to touch brief, uh, briefly? Marcus Demanda is in the chat, and uh, one of our more popular series, of Mr. course, Demanda. has been Summer. I want to talk about Summer and that series. Oh, sure. Hi, um, you can blame me for Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> so back when I first started getting into voice acting and stuff, I was trying out the whole audiobook thing, and there was this book on ACX.com, which is the audiobook creation exchange called The Forever Show. And a lot of the stuff um, that was looking for my voice type was like a lot of young adult stuff. And this was also young adult stuff. But very specifically, I think in the description, he said, this isn't like Twilight. And I was like, you have my attention. <laughs> so that's actually the first time Summer shows up. Um, actually, technically, this forever show is a prequel to this book, Teeth. And Summer's in that too. But anyway, so um, I did Summer in that and then I was like hey Marcus do you write any others do you do short stories at all because I'm involved with this podcast it's called the no sleep podcast and they take submissions Maybe and Marcus was it. like why yes why yes I do so he submitted I think a story right away it was American White Hair which was a retelling of the cask of oh I'm gonna mess it up Amontillado Done. everyone's well, nodding so I didn't yes. ruin it okay a macchiato, I think it's pronounced. A macchiato. El macchiato. I was close. So Mariachi. Avocado. <laughs> yeah, the cask of avocado. Uh, <laughs> thrilling. 
So yeah, and then Marcus started submitting more stories. And then I think Jeff, you asked Marcus if he wanted to do a story for your podcast, you were do or your YouTube channel. And that's, that's right. when he wrote Wearing Black because he didn't know it was just you and you would have played Summer. Yeah. And I'm sad we never got that because <laughs> that, that would have been lovely. incredible. Uh, and then when I finally saw it, I was like, this is too much. I, <laughs> I, no. <laughs> I loved it, but yeah. <laughs> so, yeah Although so he did write some podcast. beautiful, a uh, couple, I think it was a couple I did on my channel, uh, little tiny short ones. And uh, there's there's some favorites of mine for sure. But yeah, he likes his big casts. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Well, we're on the subject of Marcus, could I quickly add, um, we've never done this on the podcast because it's a novel, but Marcus has got a novel called The Devil in Miss Drake's Class. And it's genuinely one of my favorite books of all time. So if anyone in the audience hasn't read it, uh, there's an audiobook version of it performed by Jessica that you can get on Audible. And it is genuinely one of my top five favorite novels ever. So I strongly, strongly recommend you check it out if you like his work on the podcast and his work with us and his work with Jessica. So Good just call. a bit of a plug there. Mm -hmm. And that Excellent. relates to more Marcus stories on the show. Uh, the Thousand Ghost stories all come from the Devil and Mixed yep. class. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's spin-offs of that. <laughs> Back to Summer, do we know how long an entirety the Summer series is? Like oh, in a, is it each ten? story's like an hour. It's a, is, it, is it 10 hours? And it's about around 10 hours, I think. You can find Jesus. that on our yeah. SoundCloud page. All wow. Right, uh, of course. Yeah. And we'll never see another story again, especially not this season. Never no way. Ever again. No, no more summer. Not happening. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> uh, uh, it'd be really nice to hear like an hour long summer story, but yeah. There was one recent read, the Thousand Ghost Stories, the, uh, the acid. Uh -huh. Yes, from, midnight yeah, at the uh, acid midnight light dance. Festival. Oh, acid that was dance. great. That's yeah, good. the interconnectedness yeah. of the universe, I really dig. Uh, a lot of authors do that on our show, and I always appreciate that. The Demandiverse? Yeah. The Demandiverse. <laughs> the Demandiverse. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, Jennifer Winters does a lot of the Southern yep. stories. I'm narrating one that comes up in a couple weeks, I think. Oh, that one's good. Yeah. yeah. Most of Henry Galley's stories all connect together in some way. I think they all, take play they all yeah. originate in the same town or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Of Stephen King of him. <laughs> Most of I'm hoping, I'm hoping well. doesn't base it on his hometown. Mm -hmm. uh, the Michael Whitehouse yeah. in Wyndham. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Wyndham. Wyndham. We Wyndham. love Wyndham. Yes. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Just I don't think I've ever Wyndham survived Wyndham. <laughs> That's well, good. folks, we're going to uh, we're going to come uh, come to an end here. So I think what uh, what we'll do is kind of like what we do at the end of the live streams. Uh, we're going to open it up, and we'll just go go around the circle. And if you want to just uh, just uh, say something, <laughs> just uh, maybe uh, just thank our fans for uh, for being with us for nine years or stuff like that, or just anything you want to say to uh, as we uh, as we head into our tenth year. So uh, why don't we start, we'll, we'll go from on my screen from the bottom up. Why don't we start with James Cleveland? Any oh. last words, James? <laughs> Me, um, um, I'm just, yeah, I mean, I can't believe I have been, how long have I been a part of this? Seven years now? So yeah. yeah, this is just incredible that we're still going and it's just so much of it. And I got to go on tour. I am so grateful that we have so many fans that just keep us going and yeah. Hmm. Nice, nice, nice. Um, Penny and Andy, they're there. Hi. Um, <laughs> yeah, just uh, just to say thank you for all the amazing stories we've been involved with. And it was brilliant to go on tour with you guys to meet, meet all the fans as well. That was fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it was brilliant, brilliant experience. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It seems like so many years ago. I was to just be about to say, yeah, yeah before it's the travel. The funnest part of 2020. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. <laughs> it's a very low bar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wonderful. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Miss Mary Murphy, any last words? 
Thank you for having me on board. This is an amazing group of people, incredible talents, and um, yes, happy anniversary. Mm, indeed, indeed. Thank you. Nicole, Nicole Doolin, any last words? Well, oh no, last words. That sounds Yeah, a scary. I know. It sounds, it sounds pretty <laughs> ominous. It's actually right all... now. Um... Any last words? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> you're scaring me. Um, no, I'm just so I'm just so glad to be a part of this project. It's it's been wonderful. There've been so many talented people, so many great writers, and the producers, and the other voice actors, and um, and the community has been fantastic mm -hmm. in how yeah. they respond. And um, I'm just happy to be a part of it. Happy anniversary! Yay! <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Now, Mr. Peter Lewis, what what dare you say to us? <laughs> as oh, we... dare I? How dare you? <laughs> it is absolutely lovely to see you all, some of you for the first time, some of you for the last time, I'm sure. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> Thank you very, very much for all of your time, your kind attention, your earbuds that have broken over the last nine years, whatever it may be. We love you deeply hmm. and you're just going to have to accept that <laughs> indeed thank you for being such a big part of this peter mr banana man himself <laughs> ellie ellie hirschman Moi? Some, okay some words of wisdom uh, well i'm just going to direct the thanks uh i mean the listeners deserve a lot of our thanks but i'm going to thank david for making this all happen, chugging along for nine years. And the other David, David Alt, for slipping my name under the door into David Cummings' office and saying, throw this guy a bone. He's, you know, he needs some work. So bringing me on to the podcast. I appreciate that. And uh, it is a lovely time working with all you guys, no matter what uh, anyone else says. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're pretty good people when all is said and done. <laughs> Mr. Jackson Atticus. Hello. <laughs> First, thank you to everyone here and in the chat, all of our viewers. Uh, I got here uh, into season six, but since then, I, from the the says I have amassed over thirty generations, which would not be possible without a uh, the the great support from the fan. So mm -hmm. Thank you all very much. Nine years is crazy, and uh, hopefully we get. Many, many, many more. So, mm -hmm. thank you. indeed, thank you. And uh, yeah, you know, we mentioned our fans and our fan community. Uh, they are awesome people, and uh, we're grateful that we have guys like Jimmy, who uh, who moderate the Facebook group and uh, keep people in line. You know, everyone gets a little naughty sometimes, but uh, no, he oh. Jimmy, Jimmy helps foster some great uh, some great interactions. So, Jimmy, uh, any any final thoughts? Well, it's an honor to be part of the No Sleep family now. I've been a fan for a long time, so it's excellent to be part of the team. Um, I also do want to reach out and thank all of the fans. Our Facebook group is almost at about 16,000 members now, so I get to interact with quite a few people. There's a lot of fantastic interaction on there. We have a really lovely community of people that really are passionate and love the show. So thank everyone for letting me be a part of that, and I'm always available if you need me in the group. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, it's a, it's such a great group. It's such a great positive uh, spirit in there, which is wonderful. Speaking of positive spirits, Mr. David Alt. Well, um, I'm used to um, giving a little speech at the end of the tours, and uh, that usually consists of saying how wonderful the community is, how um, supportive that um, the podcast and indeed you, David, have been towards um, all the communities, uh, especially the, uh, the LGBTQ plus community. Um, it's, it means such a lot that so many people have found a, a safe space within our podcast uh, and uh, and the podcast community mm -hmm. that goes around it, and that that's thanks, yes, to everyone here, but especially to you, David. So thank you. Mm, thank you, indeed. Yeah, I, I love that idea that we are a safe space that people can uh, feel included. That's uh, mm -hmm. that's very important. Thank you, um, Jen, Jen Tracy. 
Well, happy birthday, happy nine years. I'm uh, pretty excited to start a 10th year with everyone. And thank you, David, for bringing us all together. I think this is a fantastic crew artistically and creatively, and I'm always so hyped to hear what we make together and to see what we make together. And I thank you, David, for making it possible. Mm, thank you. Mr. Jörn Meyer, the man hey, everyone. who does it all. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm just going to make uh, three quick shout outs. Um, the first goes out to David Cummings. Uh, the Nursery Podcast was the first project I contributed to that actually compensated me for my work. Like the first um, project that actually paid me to do art. And that did a lot to, to foster my self-confidence in, in my craft and to see that it, this is something I could actually pursue to make, um, make a living out of eventually at some point and that is uh, i can't stress enough how important that has been uh second shout out to everyone who uh, chooses to pay money to the show which pays all of our salaries um i i just think it's absolutely swell that you choose to support independent media in a time where most media is either owned by disney or netflix <laughs> so uh, <laughs> uh having something independent out there and being able to contribute to that is is close to my heart and the third shout out to Kyle's bow tie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, screw you, Dan. Don't, don't no, forget Dan. Yeah. No, my bow tie <laughs> yes. only. Hey, I have mine on first, man. What is this? <laughs> the bow tie <laughs> came with the mustache. Dang it. It's the color. It's just the color. <laughs> the color, right. Uh, Mr. Jeff Clement, final oh. words, my friend. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I don't know what to say other than thank you, everybody who listens, um, who contributes. Thank you, David, for assembling such an amazing team of talent. Um, I don't know how you are able to get so many like-minded people, but yet who come from such diverse backgrounds together. It's, it's quite something. It's, it's quite the feat. Um, being able to make a living doing what you love that started as a hobby and a passion project is is every artist's dream and we're able to actualize on that with the show mm -hmm. and that's thanks to you and thanks to our amazing and generous fans for all of that it's it's a dream come true really um yeah and the being able to work on a show that has been the inspiration for so many other shows that's been around since podcasting was in in its infancy uh, is a real mark of prestige. It's a real mark of honor for all of us. Um, and, and from that, it's, it's become, uh, let us on down our own career paths that, uh, that, that otherwise might not have existed at all. Um, and I think that's an amazing legacy that the show has uh, created for itself. So I'm, I'm very thankful for that. And, um, and I'm also uh, a huge, I just want to throw in my support and of your acknowledgement, you know, of, of where we can go in the future and, and with supporting uh, actors of color and, and contributors of color. Um, and I'm really excited to see what the future holds for No Sleep uh, in that regard, because I think it's just going to make us even stronger and more rich and more, more relatable to everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, it's exciting. We've got, uh, we've already got two new voice actors uh, of color who are joining us uh, very shortly. And uh, again, it's amazing to see the talent that uh, the people are going to bring to this show. And uh, so it's exciting. Thank you, Jeff. Happy anniversary. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yes. Ms. Erica Sanderson. Hello. Hello. <laughs> um, thank you to everyone who listens to the show, who supports us week after week. Uh, thank you to you, David, for giving me the wonderful opportunity to chew the microphone and chew the furniture and have play with voices and everything. And yeah, thank you just for everybody else who works on the show and being some really fantastic people to collaborate with and, and work with. And I don't think I can let it go without saying also thank you, Mr. Alt, for being my, my partner. And um, who knew that undressing me every night would lead to, to this? <laughs> it, it's a good way to um, it. Mm. It, it is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and everyone stay safe out there. Uh, keep going with everything else that's going on at the moment. Um, so yeah, be kind. Look after everyone. Yeah. Yes, yes. Very wise words. And now, um, Mr. Pink Bowtie and the person wearing him. 
Uh, <laughs> thank, thank you. Uh, they say that the best way to improve your craft is to surround yourself by people who are more talented than you. And I think there is no better example than this podcast because I feel so blessed every day to be working with people all across the country and though across the world who just show so much talent. I feel uh, just so blessed to be a part of it. And David, thank you for bringing us all together. It's been an amazing nine years and to nine more and nine more after that. Thank you so much. And uh, a big shout out to washing your hands, still very important. Uh, make sure you're doing that and uh, treating each other with kindness. Yeah, that's a good point. All these, all these hands in, in in the illustration, they've all been freshly washed. So make sure we know that. I thought they were reaching for a sink. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. I like to call him Zap the no, Disco Dan, the Zap Zap Man, Mr. Zapula. <laughs> um, I will uh, uh, echo something that uh, Mr. Alt said before uh, in complimenting the uh, community that that supports this show and the fact that it is based on two hallmarks of uh, acceptance and love, which is really what fuels this show forward all the time. And I think not only, um, you know, is our fan base and our community founded on those two things, but I think the, the team of people that makes this show are founded on those same two ideals as well. Um, and of course, David, to you, um, you know, a lot of people out there don't understand that David's the person who really gave a lot of us our first shot uh, to do this, especially at this level. Um, and it, it did it without judgment and really helped bring us along, me especially. You know, when I started doing this in season six, I was awful, and now I'm slightly less awful. So, um, <laughs> but the fact that, you know, David has taken a lot of us under his wing and brought us along as voice actors and treated us as uh, as professionals from the start was amazing. So, David, to you, a happy anniversary on this show and, and to nine more. Oh, thank you, Jen. Thank you. And it's great to see you uh, go into podcasting yourself. You're, uh, thank you. You've got your own podcast, The Death of Dr. John Parker. Go check that one out, too. Thank sure. you, sir. Yes, please check it out. Um, Emily, Emily, a wonderful illustrator. Any final thoughts? <laughs> um, no, just uh, thank you guys so much um, for inviting me to this happy anniversary. And um, really, it's just a pleasure to be able to work on something that's really has always been in my ears while I've been working already. So, mm. um, yeah, just wonderful stuff, guys, everyone. Mm, well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Emily. Thank you for sharing your talent with us. It's amazing. <laughs> no, thank you for taking it. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've noticed the screen is hopping around here. People come on and off, so I don't want to forget some people. Um, Mark, did we, uh, did we get final words from you? I don't think we did. Uh, no, uh, but I just want to uh, say that be you know being a fan of the sh being a such a huge fan of the show and like sharing my art in the facebook group and you know now becoming a part of the show it's been kind of an amazing journey for me and you know kind of a dream come true as i'm such a huge fan so um yeah just thank you for for giving me a chance and i appreciate it hopefully i can participate for a very long time <laughs> yeah for sure thank you that's great and ashley i see you snuck in down at the bottom there so Thank you for your writing and all that. Any final words from you, Ashley? Uh, yeah, happy, happy anniversary. And uh, again, thank the listeners, but also want to thank all of the writers, whether returning or if you only had one story on so far, we need those good stories. So please keep submitting. And I want to thank Olivia for taking a chance on me because I reached out to her on Twitter asking if they needed help. And thankfully she took me on. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be part of the team. Right, right. That's amazing. Oh, they grow up so quickly, don't they? <laughs> uh, how about Aaron Lillis? Any final thoughts, Aaron? Oh, I have so many. Let's see if I can keep them straight. Well, first of all, thank you, David, for I remember just emailing you and saying, hey, do you need any volunteers? Not even realizing how many voice actors you already had and you still took me on. So thank you. And then again, I volunteered thinking that it was just a volunteer thing. And then you gave me money. And I was like, what the hell is this? <laughs> but thank you to the fans and everyone who pays for the show so that we can get paid and that, that enabled us to make that huge donation to the uh, to the cause which thank you again because that's from all of you and all of us and we're going to donate our time and the pay that we would have gotten to that cause to make ourselves better um, and then thank you for all the voice actors that are on the show that you know when I came on I thought oh I'm okay and then I started hearing the actual productions and realizing that I needed to be better 
and I needed to step it up. And I think that we all have done that and we've become so fucking good that uh, we're just gonna be so much better in the future. And uh, thank you to the, all the, the writers who are amazing. Thank you to the, all the artists. All the artists is, all the art on the show is just blown my mind. Yeah. Um, and uh, thank you to the people that can't be on the stream today that are also awesome, like Mike, Delgadio, Jesse, Addison, Lexi, um, all the voice actors that I, I don't know if they're still a part of it or have been in the past, like Corinne and Brian Mancy and um, all the people that we're going to welcome on the show. I'm so excited to see where it grows. Uh, and again, thank you for all the support for the, the LGBT family, which I'm a part of. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you. Thank you, Aaron. That's great. Ah, uh, Abby, Abby Howard, our great illustrator of number nine. <laughs> Any final thoughts? Uh, thank you so much for the, to the fan community for being so kind and wonderful. And especially thank you to everybody who helps to put the show together. Uh, it's a wonderful show. All of the writers do an incredible job putting together stories and, uh, the voice actors, of course, are incredible, and the editors for what I'm sure is not an easy job of putting together these shows every week. Um, I really appreciate it. And uh, especially thank you to David for, I also thought it would be a volunteer thing when I asked to do art for the show. And uh, yep. thank you so much for actually paying people. I know it's like, that it seems like a low bar, but thank you so much. You're so kind, you're a wonderful person. You put the show together and kept it going for nine years. And that's really amazing. I think the best part is how much this is like a space for creative creative people to grow a bit, to kind of stretch their wings for the first time and really understand like parts of themselves that they hadn't realized they were able to do, I guess. <laughs> anyway, myself included, uh, just every week I try to, or every time I do an illustration, I try to push myself a little bit more. So I feel that with everybody else in the show too, just constantly bettering themselves, uh -huh. I guess. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> no, that's great. Thank you. And uh, no, this has been, uh, I've learned a lot on this stream, especially the fact that so many of you are willing to just volunteer and don't want to get paid. So that's very good to know <laughs> moving forward. <laughs> yeah, nobody wants to get paid. That's true. <laughs> yeah. A whole new direction, a whole uh, totally volunteer team. Well, this can, is we, great. can we volunteer for the undressing, Erica? I mean, is there a cue to that one? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's you have to a find big me. lineup for that one. <laughs> Uh, marvelous. Mr. Graham Rowitz, any final thoughts? Yes. Uh, every time uh, an email comes into my inbox from Creative Reason, Inc., saying that there's a story to, that I get to be a part of, I feel excited. Uh, so I'm so grateful for that excitement and to be able to make and uh, create these stories with such an amazing team. So. Thank you, David. Thank you, Olivia. And uh, a thank you to the fans who support us and listen. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Graham. Uh, Olivia, you're still there, I hope. Do you have any final thoughts for with us? I am. Um, have we missed Jessica, though? Oh, we, 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 we'll, we'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sorry, I, th I thought I was the last one. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to go a bit. Halle Berry Oscar acceptance speech here, I'm afraid. Um, so, okay, some people know this, some people don't. I've got a fairly severe spinal disability. Um, the My ability to do jobs and get jobs is very, very, very limited. So the fact that you, David, took a chance with me and brought me on board and have got me so involved in the podcast has literally changed my life and helped me to get by these last few years and um, I, it would just be such a struggle without it and it means so much to me that you put that trust in me and let me be involved and how the amazing team have welcomed me on board because I'm quite new compared to most of you and it's just meant more than I could ever possibly express because I I get to not only do one of the few jobs I can do but it's my dream job mm. and I get to work on 
I get to get paid to write and edit and work on other things that I can't say. And it just, it has literally been life changing. And we, I, yeah, sorry, I'm <clears throat> lost for words a bit, but I just want to thank you so much for letting me be part of this and how I can, I cannot explain in words how much it has helped me and let me live and not worry about struggling to find work as a disabled person and well. the fans in turn allow you to allow me to do that and I'm grateful for every, every single one of our writers who writes brilliant things um and all the writers that I work with directly on projects and commissions and Jessica working on editorial with me and how we've managed to get uh, the editorial department working so well and just yeah it's yeah. I just cannot thank you enough for what you've done for me well thank you me be part of this yeah it's uh like I said, you've uh, you've been such a big part of this, and uh, I love how you're always teasing what's coming up in the future. That's exciting. Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff that we're working on. So yeah, thank you for that. We have got some very fun stuff coming. Mm -hmm. Now I want to know. Yeah. <laughs> yes, mysterious projects. Wait and uh, see. And we have the wonderful blue hair of Nicole Goodnight. Any final thoughts? <laughs> Gosh, there's so many, but I, I too will try to keep it short. Um, the first is to our fans. Without all of you, we we wouldn't we couldn't do this. Um, it's it's because of people like you that we're able to do what we love to do. We're able to do our dreams because there's people who love what we do. Every time, every single interaction I've had with any one of you has been amazing and means so much to me more than more than you'd ever know. Um, our team, I. <laughs> I could not ask for a better group of people to work with. This is one of the most kind, understanding, supportive group I've ever had the pleasure of being a part of. And there's so many of them that are just so amazing. Um, and, and of course, finally, to David. Um, David believed in me when I didn't believe in myself, and he continues to do that. And I can honestly say without no sleep, without, without any of this, I. I wouldn't be where we are today. Life would have gone so much differently. So just a huge shout out to uh, David for, I mean, not only me, but as you've heard from a lot of other people, believing in so many people and giving us the opportunity to do what we love. So thank you so much. And here's to so many more years. <laughs> mm, indeed. Many, many more years. Jessica. Jessica McAvoy. How you got to get me when I'm like crying? <laughs> you waited. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to try to do this fast so I don't, like, actually burst into tears. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think No Sleep could have easily just been a horror anthology podcast, and that could have been it, you know? It could have just been a place where we share scary stories. But we've been able to build this community and have all these people be part of this to do so much more than that. And, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> David's announcement a couple weeks ago, it's made me more proud than I've ever been to be part of anything. I look so forward to season 15. It's gonna be so good, guys. And I can't wait to welcome in so many new voice actors and so many new writers and i'm just so grateful and so proud to be part of this team and i'm a big baby and every time i cry <laughs> on the podcast i'm like actually crying so <laughs> anyway thank you guys so much it means the world to me to be part of this and to be able to share what we do and help people speak with their own voices and have their stories be told and it's so important and I'm going to turn my camera off now so I can cry a little <laughs> bit. Bye, guys. <laughs> I already got a screenshot. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jessica. That's very sweet. 
and uh, I, I saved him to the end because he's uh, he is such a, a foundational part of what we do and the, what we create. The maestro himself, Mr. Brandon Boone. Oh, um, yeah. Uh, I'll try to keep it short as well, but um, this month actually also marks seven years for me with the show, and I can't help but think how much everything has changed uh, for me personally in those seven years. Um, just going from, you know, having like a laptop and a little keyboard to doing a show in Stockholm. You know, it's just I I can't thank you enough, David. And um, again, like everyone else has said, you you give us all a shot. And um, uh, damn it, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna I'll keep it together. Um, but yeah, it's it's uh, it, it was a time when I didn't feel I had a voice for music, for writing music, and um, you gave me that voice, and all of you did, and all the writers, and and you, and the voice actors, and the edit, editing team, and everything. You gave me a reason to write music, and that's what I've always needed. And um, you know, seven years and four thousand tracks later, or whatever it is, mm-hmm. um, it's just been really awesome to grow with you guys and. Um, and build this community and, and, and like Jessica was saying it's so special and um, it just keeps getting better and I can't thank all of you enough um, and the fans too for supporting the show and making all this a possibility um, I'm not a, a words guy you guys know this so uh, I'll probably leave it at that but like genuinely thank all of you indeed indeed I think that's uh that's kind of the theme of not just this, but uh, when, whenever you reflect on something that's that's gone on this long, even if it, whether it's a year or nine years, it's uh, that spirit of thankfulness for the people who you can collaborate with. And uh, uh, I'm I'm grateful. I, I very much appreciate the the words of thanks directed my way. But uh, I to me it's. I, I guess I, I share the same sentiments of, of just absolute honor to collaborate with people of talent and of vision and uh, a desire to improve themselves as people and to improve the world as people. And uh, one of the questions I noticed in the chat was, did, did I ever imagine that this would be, you know, when I started? Um, you know, uh, would we be here in nine years, nine years after? And uh, I think the answer is safely no. I did not uh, expect that. Um, but I do remember uh, just, it was just before publishing the first episode. I was, I was literally about to click submit to get the first episode out. And I thought to myself that it was almost, it was a, like a weird sort of pep, pep talk, an anti-pep talk, because I basically said to myself that I know that horror is such a niche genre. It's the smallest genre. Back in the day, I used to go into video stores, and there'd be action, there'd be comedy, huge sections, and then this little tiny horror section. And I knew that, so horror had a lot going against it in terms of developing an audience. And um, podcasting was, was very, very new. And this was a show being put out by a bunch of nobodies. You know, we weren't celebrities or anything. And so before I clicked that button, I thought, hardly anyone is going to hear this. Hardly anyone is going to enjoy it. And it was, I guess it was that, you know, set the, the expectations low. And, uh, and that was the start of this podcast. And to think that it has grown to where it's grown uh, is mind-boggling. And so uh, I cannot thank enough our listeners over the years and the people who, who, who listen certainly to those who, who uh, support the season pass program and make this possible and uh, to everybody who has contributed their time and talent to this program. It has just been uh, an, un, an ineffable <laughs> honor. I, I really don't have words to express it fully. So thank you. Uh, to everyone and uh, I'll echo what Jessica said we're looking forward to uh, the remaining episodes of season 14 and season 15 and onwards and uh, I think someone in the chat said we'll do this again in 10 years and see how how we how we all look this is a time capsule this is uh, with all our 
all our beauty, our, our youth, and we'll see where we go from here. But thank you. So, uh, yeah, I think that's uh, a fitting place to bring this stream to an end. So thank you to one and all. And, uh, yeah, the new episode is out. And uh, have a listen. And uh, thanks again to everybody who helped contribute to the donation today and to nine years of sleepless nights. Thank you, David. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, everyone. Thank Love you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks everyone. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thanks so bye, much. Bye. 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 Bye.